The Voyager spacecraft have been traveling through the depths of space for over 40 years. Their mission to explore the furthest reaches of our solar system and beyond. But as these intrepid machines venture deeper into the darkness, they face an uncertain fate. Despite being some of the most advanced pieces of technology ever built, Voyager 1 and 2 are now showing their age, with limited power, failing instruments, and decreasing fuel supplies. But NASA has a new strategy to keep the Voyagers alive and productive for as long as possible. Join us as we explore how the Voyagers will be given a new life, and the profound impact that these missions have had on our understanding of the universe, and our place within it. As always, we start at the edge of the universe. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were two spacecrafts that were sent into space in 1977 on a risky mission to study Jupiter, Saturn, Saturn's rings, and the two planets' larger moons up close. More than four and a half decades later, Voyager 2 is more than 12 billion miles from Earth, venturing into interstellar space and using its five science instruments to unlock the secrets of the universe that lies beyond our solar system. But as equipment ages, it faces new difficulties, including dwindling power supplies that could force the spacecraft's critical instruments to shut down. The Voyager team has taken the risky step of using a small backup power reserve that was set aside as part of an onboard safety device to avoid this from happening. This choice enables Voyager 2 to delay the year and shut down of one of its scientific instruments until 2026. The Voyager probes are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGS, that convert heat from decaying plutonium into electricity. As the generators decay over time, they produce less power each year, threatening the operation of the spacecraft's vital instruments. Engineers have disabled heaters and other systems that aren't necessary to keep the spacecraft in flight to make up for the loss. The team had to discover a new approach to keep the instruments running on Voyager 2, because all of their previous alternatives had been exhausted. The information gathered by Voyager 2, as it travels farther into the unexplored reaches of interstellar space, will assist scientists in resolving fundamental issues regarding the structure of the heliosphere and its function in shielding Earth from the energetic particles and other radiation present in the interstellar medium. If the new approach works well for Voyager 2, the team may implement it on Voyager 1 as well, ensuring that these intrepid spacecraft continue to explore the mysteries of the universe for a few more years to come. Meanwhile, an alien hunting telescope has picked up a faint and interesting signal from Voyager 1. Yes, you heard that right. The Allen Telescope Array in California, which was only recently refurbished, is a radio telescope array used for astronomical studies and a parallel hunt for extraterrestrial intelligence. And it was unexpected when the ATA picked up a signal from the Voyager 1 probe which is currently well outside of Pluto's orbit and at the outer edge of the solar system. The telescope array made contact with the Voyager 1 probe on July 9, using 20 of its 42 dish antennas, which are each over 20 feet wide. It's amazing to think that the signal traveled more than 150 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Additionally, the telescope captured 15 minutes of data, which were saved on a disk according to a statement from NASA. It's interesting to note, though, that the statement offered no further details regarding the signal it picked up. We are aware, however, that at a distance of 14.6 billion light-years from Earth and in the interstellar medium, things can go wrong with little to no involvement from humans to save the day. Add to that, the Voyagers are 45 years old now having been launched in the 1970s. So when Voyager 1 began to transmit garbled nonsense instead of telemetry data in May 2022, 
NASA began to develop a remote diagnosis and fix. Now, some months later, they are triumphant. Voyager 1 is back online and communicating perfectly with ground control as if it never happened. In fact, the fix turned out to be relatively simple for NASA, sitting billions of miles away from the spacecraft. But the spacecraft came back online with a new mystery. In mid-May, Voyager 1 is on board system, responsible for keeping its high gain antenna pointed at Earth, known as the Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, started beaming home confusing jumbles of data, instead of the usual reports about the spacecraft's health and status. From our viewpoint, it appeared as if the spacecraft had developed something like an electronic version of aphasia, a condition that causes the loss of fluent speech. The data may appear to be randomly generated, or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in, explained NASA in a statement from the time. Even more baffling for engineers, Voyager 1 appeared to be in perfect condition despite the spacecraft's bizarre status reports. The radio signal from the ship remained strong and steady, which meant the antenna was still pointed at Earth, and not in whatever configuration the AACS was claiming it was into NASA, in the reports. Similarly, Voyager 1's science systems kept gathering and transmitting data as usual, without any of the same strangeness affecting the AACS. And, whatever was wrong with the AACS, didn't trip a fault protection system designed to put the spacecraft in safe mode, when there's a glitch. Thankfully, NASA engineers diagnosed the problem. And with the diagnosis, they could employ a cure. It turned out that the AACS had started sending its telemetry data via an onboard computer that had stopped working years ago. The dead computer corrupted all the outgoing data. All NASA engineers had to do was send the command to the AACS to use the correct computer to send its data home. The next task will be to determine the precise reason the AACS switched computers in the first place. The system most likely received a faulty command from another onboard computer, according to NASA. While they say it is not a major concern for Voyager 1's well-being right now, the true culprit will need to be found and fixed to prevent future weirdness. For the last decade, Voyager 1 has been cruising in interstellar space, beyond the reach of our sun's magnetic field. The field had offered the craft a little protection from cosmic rays and other interstellar radiation, much as Earth's magnetic field offers some protection from high-energy particles and radiation from the sun. Cosmic rays are known to interfere with electronics here on Earth when one of those high-speed energetic particles strikes a computer chip it can cause small memory errors, which add up over time, and it's reasonable to expect that to be an issue for Voyager 1 is on board computers too. A mystery like this is sort of puff for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission, said Voyager 1 and 2 project manager, Suzanne Dodd, in a statement dated 2 May. Both spacecraft are much older than what the mission planners had anticipated, almost 45 years old. We are also in interstellar space, which is a highly radioactive region that has never been explored by a spacecraft. We'll have to wait and see what new dangers Voyager encounters next on its journey and what fresh discoveries lie in store. Looking back, it's been 45 years since NASA's Voyager spacecrafts blasted off from Earth, but the twin explorers still call home from billions of miles away. We do the hello, are you okay, Call? Once a week, said Suzanne. With the help of the check-ins, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 may communicate their precise locations on the other side of the heliosphere, a remote area of the solar system whose magnetic field protects Earth and the other planets from galactic cosmic rays. It was during one of these calls in May that Voyager 1 sent a perplexing signal Data from the computer that controls its orientation came back in jumbled bits, jumbled ones and zeros, and it continued to look gibberish. 
It is like the check engine light turned on, added Bruce Wagoner, a JPL engineer, who oversees the operations of the Voyager missions. We could not isolate it to a specific area. This computer is critical because it keeps Voyager 1's communication antenna pointed firmly in Earth's direction. The longest phone call ever made by humanity would be permanently terminated by any malfunction or loss of electricity. Given its current distance from Earth, Voyager 1 is broadcast stake about 22 hours to reach our planet when traveling at the speed of light. The wait will be worthwhile. The communications provide important scientific information on plasma waves, cosmic rays, and interstellar magnetic fields. Transmissions from the Voyagers are received by the Deep Space Network, a trio of colossal radio antennas in California's Mojave Desert, Australia and Spain. They are spread out across the globe to ensure at least one of them can be aimed at any point in the sky. All three sites have a 230-foot antenna built specifically to listen to the Voyagers. The farther they go, the harder they are to hear. The Voyager's radios transmit signals at a mere 23 watts of power. By the time those signals reach Earth, they are reduced to the faintest of whispers, just one billionth of a watt. The spacecraft are getting weaker too, due to the radioactive decay of the plutonium-238 that powers them. Their batteries can lose up to 4 watts of power annually. Trade-offs are necessary for survival what may be sacrificed and what can be kept when energy is limited. And as for the sudden hijack of its computers, why Voyager 1 made the switch in the first place is still a mystery, and one worth solving, since it suggests something else isn't quite right aboard the spacecraft. So, would you like to travel to the other side of the universe, or stick with us here, at the edge of the universe, until we meet again?